Navy veteran Joe Orisalicha served his country for 18 years. He was in the Middle East, he served in Northern Ireland and in the Falklands. Now, though, he's found himself with his own battle for justice. In 1993, Joe was sacked by the Royal Navy for being bisexual, the victim of a ban that the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, last year called an appalling failure. He lost his rank, but also his pension, and that's money he's been battling to get back. We're going to be talking to Joe in just a moment. And Joe joins us now, along with Craig Jones, from Fighting With Pride. Um, Joe, to go back to the, uh, the beginning and the start of your career in the Royal Navy, because I think for, for many of our viewers, especially our younger viewers, they'll find this, uh, you know, uh, almost impossible to believe. Mm. What happened on the very first day you were in the job in the Royal Navy when the, um, the SIB, the investigators, spoke to you, you um, uh, uh, as new naval recruits? Uh, we were doing basic training and uh, two gentlemen come into the room and uh, they asked every, everybody in the class were there any gays present? Nobody put their hand up. And the response afterwards was, good, because if you were, we'd put you in prison and then kick you out. That was in 1990... That was in 1976. 1976. But that law stayed in place until... 2000. Which seems... And that's why Ed refers to the fact that the next generation would find this astonishing, that basically it was illegal to be gay and serve in the armed forces. And you were a victim of that, but for 18 years, you covered up your sexuality in order not to be kicked out. But in 1993, finally, you were, well, somebody said discharged. that- Discharged. You, you were discharged, but somebody had said they'd seen you in a gay bar in Plymouth, which was not even the case, no. was it? No, this was during the court martial. Um, they said that you incriminated ev evidence against me, put me in the accused You were court-martialed for... for what? For being in bed with another rating. And there was no truth to it whatsoever. But they put me in the accused room, left the door wide open, and this young guy walked past, stopped in the doorway, took one look at me, looked me up and down and carried on walking. And then... They continue with the court martial, and this was the new incriminating evidence that this guy knew me from a gay bar in Plymouth. Now, this is totally untrue because I've never been in a gay bar. What I find awful is that you served your country honourably yes. in the Middle East, you served in Northern Ireland at a very tense time, you were in the Falklands, and yet. For 18 years, hanging over you is this fear that at some stage someone's going to find out about who you, who you are. But you don't give them any reason to discharge you. Oh. They find a reason to do that. If you had stayed in the Navy for just a handful more years, you would have been entitled, of course, to your pension, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, indeed. And how much would that have been? Well, I couldn't tell you what today's pension mm. is, but it's it's quite a, a, a substantial amount of money. Yeah. But nevertheless, I had to wait a further 17 years before I got my pension through at a reduced rate. Mm. The, the thing is that now you are waiting for compensation for what the Prime Minister admits was an injustice. But you are in a precarious state, aren't you? Because you have prostate cancer, which is seriously threatening your health. That, that's one of the few things I've got. I've got chest cancer. Right. They suspect it's now moved up into the brain. Mm. And I've also got a pacemaker. Gosh. How long do you think you're still going to have to wait for compensation for what Well, going the by the history you? of the Royal Navy and the Ministry of Defence, I think I'll be dead before anything happens. It seems to be a pattern at the moment, doesn't it? We know the government is, seems to be very slow paying the compensation to the postmasters and mistresses um, after the terrible um, injustice that they have suffered. We know the same thing has happened now. The, the, the payments still haven't come through for people um, who were given kind of um, corrupted blood if they were haemophiliacs or more widely. Um, but in this case, I mean, the Prime Minister said last year it was appalling. Mm. So is there any reason why they wouldn't have just 
sorted this out straight away. I, I can't understand the, 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 you know, the working of them. Obviously, I've been fighting them for 27 years, 25 years just to get my medals back. Which medals did they take away? That was away? my long service and good conduct medal. Eventually, the then <clears throat> Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, mm. uh, gave it to me at Whale Island mm. and apologised then and told me that they were going to pay compensation. But that was two years ago and I'm still waiting. Just tell us what you did for our country in the Falklands. I was on HMS Ardent. Right. So you were serving in the oh, Falklands yeah, War? Yeah, yeah, I was serving. In, in a war, in the Navy? I won't call it's... it a war, it was more of a conflict. Mm. Mm -hmm. But it's a terrible way to treat somebody who served our country. Well, indeed, you know, and we see history has shown us that a person's sexuality has no burden in times of a conflict. Craig Jones, you are from uh, Fighting With Pride. How many people are in the same situation? It's difficult to be sure, because during the years of the ban, everybody lived very clandestine lives, and the Ministry of Defence destroyed its police records in 2010. So the Ministry of Defence has no idea, but we assess between one and 2,000 people a due compensation, and the government is simply not moving fast enough to make sure that they deliver to this amazing group of veterans yes. who step forward in the service of the United Kingdom and have been treated appallingly. They need to be treated better than this. What would you say to the Prime Minister this morning, Joe? Keep to your word. And his word was that he apologised to the nation on behalf of the government right. and that they would be making recompense. So keep to that word. And do it quickly. Do it quickly. So I might not be here next year. Well, we, we owe it to you, Joe, to do it as fast as we possibly can. I spoke to the captain of the uh, Portland Naval Base, who uh, he wrote to the Admiral saying he had no doubt in his mind that disgusting people such as me, there was no place for us in the civilised armed forces. And if they kept me in, he had no, no uh, way of thinking that I would try and coerce junior rates. And I told him, you made your mind up, because I hadn't even been for a court martial then. But I said, you've made your mind up. Now hear this, I will fight it to my dying breath. And that's yeah. what I'm doing. You've been treated shockingly badly um, to have given so much in defence of this. Not just hundreds and hundreds more. We should tell you, Joe, what the, the Minister of Defence told us. They said, we deeply regret the treatment of LGBT serving personnel between 1967 and 2000 which was wholly unacceptable and does not reflect today's armed forces. We've already implemented over half the recommendations of the LGBT Veterans Review and are working at pace to deliver those that remain. But um, they need to work at pace to give you the compensation you need, Joe. It's what, sorry? Yeah, they need um, to work at pace. They do. They do. They need to hurry up. Joe, thank you. Yes. It's really good to meet you. Likewise. And I hope you stay with us. Well. <laughs> for, a, for a long time. Yes, indeed, thank you. Um, and thank you, Craig, for, for the work you, you're doing as well thank on behalf of this wronged, wronged group of people. It's a pleasure. I mean, there has been progress in some areas, we accept that, but on compensation, nothing has yet been done and that must change. Oh, that's right. Thank you both and huge good luck. OK, thank, thank you. you.